Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of Mr. Klutz is Nuts. Chapter five, My Big Mouth. It just so happens that I know of the perfect way to get sent to the principal's office. All you have to do is put a tack on the teacher's chair. My friend Billy told me he did this once and he got sent to the principal's office. I waited until recess when Andrea and Emily ran off to play with the girls. Then I told the plan to my best friend Ryan and Michael. That's genius, exclaimed my best friend Ryan. What if Miss Daisy gets hurt, asked Michael. She won't get hurt, I told him. She'll jump up so fast that she won't hardly feel it. So at the end of recess, the three of us snuck back into our classroom. It was empty. Miss Daisy was eating in the teacher's room. Ryan pulled a tack out of the bulletin board and put it on Miss Daisy's chair. Then we ran out to the playground just as the end of recess bell was ringing. When we filed back into the class, Ryan, Michael, and I could barely look at one another because we were afraid we'd burst out laughing. I could hardly wait to see the look on Miss Daisy's face when she sat on her chair. Well, when Miss Daisy sat down, the most amazing thing happened. Nothing. She didn't jump up or anything. She just sat there. Me and Ryan and Michael looked at one another. How could she not feel that? She must have buns of steel, Ryan whispered. She's like Superman. Then I realized that I had forgotten to tell Ryan something very important. When you put a tack on the teacher's chair, you're supposed to put the tack a little bit on one side. When you put it in the middle of the chair, the tack sort of... Well, you know, it doesn't have any target to hit, if you know what I mean. Miss Daisy got up to do math, not even realizing there was a tack in her butt. When she turned around to write on the chalkboard, we could see the tack was just sticking there, hanging in the middle of her backside. Me and Ryan and Michael thought we were going to die trying to keep ourselves from laughing. It was probably the funniest thing that had ever happened in the history of the world. You should have been there. Excuse me, said Andrea, raising her hand to ruin everybody's fun like always. Miss Daisy, I think there's something stuck to your skirt. Miss Daisy turned around and pulled out the tack. Who did this? She demanded. I did, Ryan bragged. Go to the principal's office, Ryan. All right, Ryan whispered, pumping his fist. I'll be back in a few minutes with a candy bar. Is there anyone else who wants to go to the principal's office? Miss Daisy asked. I do, said Michael. Can I go again? I said. Hey, I asked first, Michael complained. Quiet, both of you. Miss Daisy pretended nothing unusual had happened and went back to her lesson. But I saw her look at her chair carefully before she sat down again. A few minutes later, Ryan came back to the classroom. Mr. Klutz was with him. So did he give you a candy bar? I whispered excitedly when Ryan sat down. No, Ryan whispered back. When I told him that I thought he would give me a candy bar like he gave one to you, he got really upset. He told me he was going to call my parents and have them come in to talk about what happened. I think we're all in big trouble. Oh man, I decided that maybe it wouldn't be such a good idea to be best friends with Ryan anymore. I should have kept my big mouth shut about the candy bar. Chapter 6. The Chocolate Party When I thought about it, Putting a tack on Miss Daisy's chair was a pretty dumb thing to do. Mr. Klutz went to the front of the class. I was sure he was going to bring us all to the torture chamber in the basement, but he didn't look all that mad, considering what we had done. It has come to my attention that some of the students at our school need a little extra incentive to behave and work their hardest, Mr. Klutz said. Do you know what the word incentive means? An incentive is a reward that encourages a person to work harder to achieve something. An incentive is a reward that encourages a person to work harder to achieve something, Andrea announced, all proud of herself. She thinks she knows everything. I hate her. 
Very good, Andrea, said Mr. Klutz. What sort of incentive might bring out the best work in the students of our school? You could give us each a million dollars, suggested Michael. You could make summer vacation last all year long, I said. How about getting rid of homework, asked Ryan. Miss Daisy went to the front of the room. Mr. Klutz can't do those things, she said. But remember when all the students in our school read a million pages in books, and as a reward, we turned the gym into a video game arcade? That was quite successful. Mr. Klutz even dressed up in a gorilla suit for the evening, if I recall. How about a chocolate party, suggested Andrea. Yeah, everybody yelled. Mm, said Miss Daisy. I like that idea. We all got very excited because if there is one thing that just about everybody loves, it's chocolate. Kids started shouting out things we could have at the party, like chocolate cupcakes and chocolate fudge and chocolate bunnies and chocolate ice cream and on and on and on and on. But wait a minute, Mr. Klutz said. What are you going to do to earn this chocolate party? We could read another million pages, suggested Ryan. We did that already, Emily said. How about a million math problems, I said. What a wonderful idea, Miss Daisy beamed. Ever since we taught her how to add and subtract, Miss Daisy loved math. Math is hard, Ryan said. How about a hundred math problems? One million math problems, Mr. Klutz insisted. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. We'll take it, we all yelled. Agreed. If the kids in our school do one million math problems, I'll throw a party with so much chocolate, you'll be sick for a week. I'll bring the bonbons, Miss Daisy volunteered. Hooray, we all yelled, except for Ryan, who looked all mad. I'm not going to spend my free time doing math, Ryan said. I hate math. I wouldn't do extra math if you kissed a pig on the lips. Okay, as an added incentive, Mr. Klutz said, on the night of the party, I will kiss a pig on the lips. Have a nice day. All right. What a cool, wacky guy Mr. Klutz is. He is the coolest principal in the history of the world. Chapter 7. Teacher for a Day The news about the big chocolate party blew through the school like a hurricane. Even kids who were allergic to chocolate wanted to go, just so they could see Mr. Klutz kiss a pig on the lips. Where is he going to get a pig? Ryan asked during lunch the next day. He could try AJ's house, Andrea said. That's so funny I forgot to laugh, I said. I'm not entirely sure that pigs have lips, said Emily. Of course they have lips, I insisted. If they didn't have lips, how could they whistle? You know, Ryan pointed out, Mr. Klutz is just trying to trick us into doing lots of math problems. That's why we're having a chocolate party. Who cares, Michael said, as long as we get the chocolate. I think that the... I think that only students who do math problems should be allowed to come to the chocolate party, said Andrea. Could you possibly be any more boring? I asked her. As it turned out, everybody was doing math problems. The whole school started doing math problems like crazy. Even Ryan. You would have thought that Mr. Klutz was giving us gold and diamonds instead of chocolate. I did math problems for 20 minutes last night, Ryan bragged while we were waiting for Miss Daisy after recess. Oh yeah, Michael said. Well, I did math problems for 40 minutes last night. 40 is twice as many as 20, see? I just did another math problem right there. Well, I did math problems for an hour last night, I said. That's 50 whole minutes. An hour is 60 minutes, dumbhead, Andrea told me. I was going to tell her that 60 minutes was a TV show my parents watch. But Mr. Klutz suddenly burst into our classroom. He told us that Miss Daisy had a dentist appointment and we would have a substitute teacher for the rest of the afternoon. Mr. Klutz! We all gasped. <gasps> You're not a teacher, I told him. I used to be a teacher, he said. I taught for many years before I became a principal. What did you teach? Ryan asked. Physics, he said. What's that? Is that like phys ed? Asked Michael. Mr. Klutz, do you know that this is second grade? Andrea pointed out. Physics is something high school students study. 
Poppycock, said Mr. Klutz. You're never too young to learn something new. You may find you're smarter than you think. Well, if you say so. Physics is the study of motion and energy and force, he said. For example, if I take a blackboard eraser in one hand and a book in the other hand and I drop them at the same time, which one will hit the floor first? The eraser, I said. It's smaller and lighter, so it will fall faster, just like small light kids run faster than big heavy kids. No, the book will hit the floor first, insisted Ryan. Bigger and heavier things build up more speed than little things. I think they'll both hit the floor at the same time, said Andrea. Let's do a test, said Mr. Klutz. He put the eraser in his left hand and a paperback book in his right hand. Then he climbed on top of Miss Daisy's desk and held both objects in the air. Then he dropped them. The eraser and the book hit the ground at the exact same time. I told you so, said Andrea. I think I hate her more every day. According to the laws of physics, all objects fall at the exact same rate, Mr. Klutz told us. See, you're learning physics in second grade. Wait a minute, said Michael. That's not a fair test, because the eraser and the book are almost the same size and weight. Yeah, Ryan said. Try it with different objects. Okay, Mr. Klutz said as he picked up a pencil off Miss Daisy's desk. Then he went over to the windowsill, where Miss Daisy kept her collection of stuffed animals. He picked up a giraffe that was almost as big as I am. Would this be a fair test, he asked. Yeah, we all shouted. Now, which object do you think will hit the floor first, he said as he climbed up on Miss Daisy's desk again. The pencil, some of us shouted. The giraffe, other kids yelled. I think they will both hit the floor at the same instant, said Andrea. Okay, let's do a test, said Mr. Klutz. As he raised both his arms in the air, Mr. Klutz put his foot on a crayon that was sitting on Miss Daisy's desk. It rolled a little, his foot slipped, he wobbled for a moment, trying to keep his balance. Then he pitched head first off the desk. Watch out! Crash! Then he hit the floor. The pencil and the giraffe went flying, and Mr. Klutz's arms and legs went in different directions. It was just about the funniest thing that had ever happened in the history of the world. You should have been there. We all ran over to see if Mr. Klutz was okay. He was holding his leg and moaning. Uh -huh. See, said Andrea, all three objects hit the ground at the same time. The pencil, the giraffe, and Mr. Klutz. So I was right. I hate her. Chapter 8. Mr. Klutz puckers up. When Mr. Klutz got back from the hospital, we were all relieved to hear that he hadn't broken any bones. He was limping, though, and told us he would have to use a cane for a week. We were afraid he might call off the chocolate party, but he was more excited about it than ever. Everybody in the whole school got involved doing math problems so we could win the party, even the teachers. During library period, Mrs. Rupee asked us questions like, if the library had a hundred books and you checked out 50 of them, how many would be left in the library? During music period, Mr. Hind asked us questions like, if the school only has 10 trumpets and six kids sign up to take trumpet lessons, how many more kids can sign up for trumpet lessons? Miss Daisy made a big tote board so we would know how many math problems we had completed. Every day, she tallied up all the math problems on her tote board. It wasn't long before the school had finished a million math problems. Andrea did the problem that put us over the top, of course. I hate her. On the night of the chocolate party, you should have seen the gym. They had music and games and tables were set up with chocolate chip cookies, chocolate cake, chocolate muffins, and even broccoli covered with chocolate. Yuck! By the end of the party, I thought I was going to throw up. It was the greatest night of my life. At 9 o'clock, somebody came in with this big pig on a leash. I don't know where they got it. The zoo, I guess. We all watched as this pig was brought over to Mr. Klutz. He wrinkled up his face and acted like he was all disgusted. Mr. Klutz, that is, not the pig. 
When he bent over and kissed the pig on the lips, the whole school went crazy. Mwah. Even the pig freaked out, oinking and squealing and running around the gym until the grown-ups were able to catch it. It was a real Kodak moment, if you ask me. Okay, everybody. So that is part two of Mr. Klutz's Nuts. Uh, tune in again for part three. I'll see you soon.